the brain controls arm and hand movements by sending commands to neurons in the cervical spinal cord. Spinal cord injury disrupts the pathways that carry brain signals, leading to paralysis. Here, we designed a digital bridge between the brain and the cervical spinal cord to re-establish volitional control over muscle activity, restoring control of one arm and hand in humans with tetraplegia. This digital bridge converts motor intentions decoded from cortical activity into patterns of epidural electrical stimulation. To deliver stimulation, we designed an implantable 32-channel stimulation system targeting the cervical spinal cord segments innervating muscles from the shoulder to the fingers. Stimulation parameters such as electrode configurations, frequency and amplitude can be modulated in real-time through wireless communication. To decode patients' intentions, we used a 64-channel implantable epidural device, covering the cortical regions involved in the planning, execution and feedback of arm movement. We enrolled and implanted a first participant with an incomplete C4 spinal cord injury. After implantation, we conducted a comprehensive mapping of muscle responses to stimulation parameters. By quantifying muscle activity, kinematics, and torques we elaborated a library of elementary upper limb movements accessible through stimulation. We then trained an algorithm to infer motor intentions of the participant from his cortical activity. We designed a self-supervised learning strategy based on masked autoencoders to learn the latent structure of temporal, spectral, and spatial patterns in ECOG signals. These latent brain features were computed online and fed into a recursive exponentially weighted Markov switching multilinear model, predicting the probability of the different upper limb movements. This approach allowed the decoding of up to six states with 81% cross-correlation accuracy. The decoder also predicts combinations of movements requiring multiple elementary stimulations simultaneously. After calibration, the digital bridge restored partial movements. Prosthetic movements were incorporated into the rehabilitation program of the participant over 50 sessions. After neurorehabilitation, significant gains in motor scores as well as functional outcome measures were observed even in absence of stimulation. The digital bridge offers new perspectives to restore voluntary arm and hand function after cervical spinal cord injury.